Hello, welcome to Breaking the Chains Africa. This is Honorable Odomato, a contemporary philosopher, historian, a political scientist, a lawyer that today is making another release. Today we are going to talk about justice, law and order sector in the African continent. After the scramble and partition of Africa, the 1884 conference that took place in Germany, in Berlin, divided Africa into several countries by a stroke of a pencil by the colonial imperialist. But it is prudent to note that before colonization, there were systems of justice, law, and order that were run by several kingdoms in highly centralized societies like Buganda, like in Bantu, like in Benin, you know, your empire, in Katal Kante's territory, in KB, and several kingdoms in thousands. They had a system of justice, law, and order. But of interest to me is that there were no prisons. There were no recognized prisons in the African continent. So with independence, the colonial powers came and created prisons. That's why today we are talking about justice, law, and order in the African continent. Now, the prison system left by the imperialists at independence, in my opinion, was and is an extension of colonialism in the African continent. In Africa, we had a moral system of governing society. But after independence, we had a mechanical system of governing the society. The Western world system was premised on capitalism. The law in the entire Western world is premised on the basis that there are capital owners, are individual capital owners, and they needed the law to protect the rights of the individual and they needed the law to protect the property of individuals. So when various colonial powers, Germany, France, Britain, Spain, Portugal, came and colonized Africa, they introduced a justice system. So the current justice system in Africa is an extension of colonial legacy. The prisons that were designed by the colonial masters were to sustain colonial oppression of Africans. Now, let's talk a little bit about the types of justice when we talk of justice. It's not a blank one. There are four types of justice systems. There is distributive justice. There is restorative justice. There is retributive justice. And there is procedural justice. Now, in Europe, their justice system was premised on retribution, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But in Africa, the justice system was restorative. They end at restoring the individual so that they become members of the society. In very many African countries, there was not even the death sentence. And yet after colonization, death sentence was introduced in the penal code of various countries. Today. How does it become philosophical? It becomes philosophical because at the eve of independence, the Western world left Africans with a bunch of laws that cannot be followed. For example, in many countries, the penal code has over 300 pieces of legislation. 300. A country without law, a society without laws, written laws, a society without prisons, imperialism left us with prisons, left us with laws. The African traditional justice system was deliberately destroyed. The African customary institutions was deliberately destroyed. So now we have a situation. For example, in the Western justice system introduced by a colonialist, there are offenses which in law we call minor and cognate offenses. For example, if you steal something, under the Western world system, you are charged with theft and attempted theft. 
In African society, if you go and pick cassava from someone's garden and eat it, it is not an offense. They say he's just eaten as long as it has filled the belly and he has not carried some away. And yet in the European system, an attempt to go into anyone's garden, even to pick granites, to pick uh, mangoes, that is already an offense. Theft and attempted theft. So now we have a situation in the African continent. A very worrying situation. I've been glossing through the world prison reports. The most crowded prisons in the world, let me sample 10. The most crowded prison in the world is in Haiti, where it is at 454%. Of course, we know the situation in Haiti. Many of you know, they picked slaves from Africa, took them to Europe, and from Europe, they destroyed their culture. They gave them a new religion. So in societies like Haiti, no cultural institutions, they don't accept the Western religion of Christianity. So everything is man eats man. It is the highest prison, the most highest crowded prison in the world. The second highest and most crowded prison in the world is the Philippines, which is at 436%. After that, El Salvador prisons, heavily crowded, the third most crowded in the world. Interestingly, the fourth most crowded prison in the world is Zambia. In Africa. The sixth most crowded prison in the world and in East Africa is in Uganda. Uganda is running at 129%. In Uganda, we have a total of 54,059 inmates as of October 2017. South Africa is the ninth most crowded prison in the world. They have 160,000 inmates. And of those 160,000, 30% of those inmates are waiting for trial. And yet the law says you are presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. So we are having innocent people in prison for years that after several years, they may be acquitted and they say, go home, you have no offense. And Kenya ranks very high with 80,000 inmates. The statistics can go on. So the question that needs to be answered, really, do we deserve to cut and paste the Western world justice system and have potential young men and women and children and mothers locked in prison because of an imported foreign justice system? This is where the thinking has to begin. Now, let us look at prisons. Because if you are arrested, you are taken to prison awaiting trial. If we analyze, Africa has 36% of the inmates awaiting trial. 36% of those who are innocent until proven guilty. And yet the global average is 29%. Now, let's go further to analyze the statistics to show that this is a serious matter that needs critical thinking, that needs philosophy, that Honorable Domato has started provoking thoughts in that area. Pre-trial. When you are arrested, you are presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. So you are taken to prison as you wait trial. Now, the highest pre-trial prisons in Africa. Let me sample four. Liberia has the highest number of people in prison that are awaiting for trial. They are at 97.3%. What does it mean? It means only 4% of those in prison have been convicted. Where are we going as Africa? Where are we going? Mali has 88.7% of those in prisons who are still waiting for trial. Benin is the third with 79.3%. 0.6% of inmates waiting trial. And Niger has 76% of the inmates waiting trial. So brethren, brothers and sisters, Honorable Dongato is asking a question. Are we going to continue implementing a Western justice system that is locking people in their prime ages of life for good? Are we going to keep testing 
the Western world's judicial system, which does not work in Africa in 50 years, and the prisons are being full. And I know as I talk now, many of you have inmates in, in, in prison, and you are saying, Honorable Toy is talking the right thing. But let's go to procedural, to the procedural aspect of justice. Procedural justice is how one is arrested, taken to prison, arranged in court, tried, convicted, or released. Now, Europe is a capitalist society. Money, money, money. Africa is majorly, Sub-Saharan Africa is majorly a socialist society. People, people, people. So we have two competing justice systems. The money justice system being enforced in Africa, and the people justice system being pushed under the carpet. Now, look at this scenario. To arrest a person in Africa, you need money to take to police. Many police stations and police systems in Africa has been compromised. If you are saying there's someone, there's a thief in my village, they'll say, give some money for facilitation so that we come and arrest that person. So to arrest a person, money. The person is taken to court. In court, I'm a lawyer. At times, we lawyers are accused of speaking a language that people who are arrested don't understand. They are busy looking at the furniture, looking at the people dressed in wig, putting on funny attires. And then later they say, if you want bail, this is where you go and uh, report to court from home. Money. You have to give money. Cash bail. Strange. The trial begins. You need a lawyer. Those who can afford lawyers, money. Those who cannot afford lawyers, they end up getting convicted. If you are remanded to prison because you don't have money to get you out of the African prisons to extract a production warrant, it's also money required. So the question, the philosophical question is, is the African justice system a money justice system? Arrest, money. Born, bail, money. Trials, you need lawyer, money. Is this going to continue unabated? Are we going to have this kind of criminal justice system continuing in Africa unabated? I say no. No. We need to do something. Our brothers are dying in prison. Wrong persons are dying in prison. What should be done? The English say, throwing water at everything makes it fish. So I will not end that criticism. I will end that bringing proposals. Let's explore this. One, we need to redefine the African justice system to fit the African society. We need a justice system made in Africa for Africans, not a colonial and foreign justice system. Two, we need to invest in cultural institutions. Government needs to make laws in Cameroon, in Togo, in Benin, in Sudan, in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Uganda, we need to redefine the justice system and make laws that suit the African culture. One size cannot fit all. For example, in Rwanda, the Rwanda government introduced the Gachacha courts to try the perpetrators of the Rwanda genocide. It had a very effective approach in administering justice where the local communities where the that the incidences the violences the murders took place are participants in the court system many countries need to learn from rwanda how the gachacha system is working among the nilotics in uganda the laws they have alternative justice system called the matoput among the nilotics there was no death sentence the society had mechanisms of resolving conflicts between clans and disputes being settled and reparations being paid. You kill someone, they marry a, a lady from that clan to go and produce more children to replace. They take cattle. 
you pay money compensation. These systems need to be explored. Now we are having a weird system. You find a Western world justice system being implemented on a religious conflict. Like the ones of Boko Haram. They now call it terrorism. In Uganda, the International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant for Joseph Coyne to be tried in Hague. We have African presidents in the Hague awaiting trial. This is still an extension of imperialism. This is an extension of colonialism where Africans are tried in Europe. The African Union should come out to do something and come out with legislation and we enforce it in the African continent to save our brothers who are dying. I was looking at the policy statement of Malawi. I was looking at the government policy statement of Uganda. Name an African country. In their policy statements, under justice, law and order, they are talking of building more prisons. Really? You want to build more prisons? The Africans you have in prison, not enough for a misplaced justice system? There has to be a deliberate effort to invest in community policy. The budget has to be extended to the police force so that they go to the communities and teach people the law. South Africa has 160,000 people in prison. Just imagine how much work 160,000 people can do. They can plow gardens even more than a tractor can do in a day. 160,000. So South Africa is leading in changing prisons into rehabilitation. The second country doing very well in rehabilitation of, of, of inmates is Uganda, where we even have people graduating from universities with degrees. They have education because the literacy and poverty are the key to causing crime. So in Ugandan prison, you work, you have education, they rehabilitate you. When you finish your time in prison, you come with money out to start a new life. So we need to start thinking of alternative systems. We need to start thinking of alternative sentencing. For heaven's sake, someone who has stolen a kilogram of beans, according to many penal codes, theft, three years in prison, and someone who has stolen millions of dollars from, from government coffers because they have money to influence the judicial system are never convicted. So Honorable Otoa is saying we need to engage in critical thinking to decongest our prisons, to start talking of alternative justice system like that we have in Rwanda. We need to change prisons to rehabilitation centers in countries like uh, 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 Switzerland, in countries like Norway. They even have systems where inmates report to prison from home. I'm not in any way condoning crime. We all want a free, a crime-free society, but it's absolutely not acceptable that we can have 97% of inmates in a prison waiting trial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe uh, to, to my channel, like the video, share it, and we shall make Africa a better place to live in. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.